My name is Father Lawrence Carney. I grew up in Wichita, Kansas, and I was ordained a priest in 2007 at the, at the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception. I was an associate pastor and a pastor for six years. Then I became the chaplain of the Benedictines of Mary, Queen of the Apostles. And that is the convent in Gower that makes vestments and makes CDs. And Sister Wilhelmina was the foundress and she was founding Corrupt this year. And I was her chaplain and her confessor for the last six years of her life. I started the League of St. Martin about seven years ago because I saw that there was a need for greater reverence towards God in the sanctuary and with his name. And I will talk about that more later. We also have once a year the Conference of the Holy Face in Wichita, Kansas, which used to be the air capital of the world, but Boeing moved to Seattle, so there's not much of an air capital. But that's what we were known for during World War II. So we have this conference. It's always going to be on November the 11th, and then some days before or after, up to three days. And I just want to plant a seed. Maybe you can come. There's people that come from all over the U.S. We have a solemn high mass just like today, every day. And we have solemn vespers with incensing of the altar during the Magnificat. It's very beautiful. And we have talks from priest speakers who are fired up about the devotion to the Holy Face. Question for you. Do you know what communism is? Who is one of the greatest miracle workers in our times within the last 200 years? What might be the greatest devotion outside of the sacraments has ever been given to man? Do you know how to make a perfect contrition? You better know in case they take the priests out, in case we get martyred, how are you going to have your sins forgiven? You need to come to the mission to find out how to make a perfect contrition. Because one of your roads was named after a communist dictator. And I noticed when I just, this is the first time I've been in Portland, Chavez is one of the names of your streets. That's communism in my face, and it should be in yours too. And communists hate priests. And they want to kill us because we're in their way. So I have a love for your souls because I want you to know how to make a perfect contrition in case you can't go to confession, in case we're all martyred. How do you assist someone when they're dying? I want to tell you now, but I don't have time. Please make time to come tomorrow so I can tell you. Because you can help someone get to heaven that otherwise wouldn't. They don't even have to be Catholic. You can baptize them in the danger of death. We need this mission. We need missions because missions are a time of spiritual grace. Because those that put together the mission, they suffer. God wants to inflict them so they carry the weight of the sins of those whom are coming to the mission so that they can be freed of their sins and the weight can be lifted off. It's fun being a missionary priest. I love it. But the hardest part is coming to the mission because all hell can break loose. But after it's done, it's great because I get light because people come and their sins are forgiven. The preaching compels them to get closer to God. A mission is a time of peace.
peace. We need peace. So we can see through the forest of what is before us. It's a time to make special confessions and a time to come to Mass. Some people even get off of work on purpose and make it a vacation to get Monday and Tuesday off, for example. Father's been kind to you. He's made it a double mission so you don't have to take off Wednesday and Thursday. You can almost treat Monday and, and Tuesday like it's a Sunday. Do all your work before, it's too late now, but do all your work beforehand if you ever get another missionary and treat the three days of the mission or the four days like a Sunday. Have all your food prepped, everything. So what's happening in our times? And what can I do in these times? God is punishing us. Mark my words, God is punishing us by fulfilling his promises in the Old Testament in Leviticus 26, where God repeats the Ten Commandments and says, if you follow these commandments, I will give you these blessings. If you don't follow these commandments, I'm gonna give you these curses and the curses are four times as long. And the problem with our human family today, the first three commandments, we don't even care about them. There's black magic being advertised, the occult shops on Hawthorne District. That's the sin number one. First commandment, idolatry. You shall have no other gods before me. Everyone else has their gods. We have to make reparation for them because God deserves our reverence. There's idolatry. It's done in the highest places, even in the Holy Catholic Church. There's blasphemy, taking the Lord's name in vain. Blessed be the name of God. Sit nomen dominum benedictum. Et ex hoc usque in secula. Then, that's one and two. What's the third one? Irreverence. Irreverence. In the Latin Rite Church, they've taken away our Latin Mass, more or less. And if they have their way, it might be completely gone. And if that is the case, it would fulfill scriptures where the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass would not be celebrated for three and a half years publicly. If that happens, we're close to the end times or in them. When people sin, they become enemies of God. And he says this, quote, Leviticus 26, verse 17, I will set my face against you, and you shall fall down before your enemies. God's punishing us with communism and revolutionary men. We're falling down before the globalists because God has taken away his protection. But this mission will teach you how to make a counter attack how to be the best Catholic you can be, how to get calluses on your knees. God is punishing us with poverty. I will quickly visit you with poverty. Communism wants to take away the middle class. They want to transfer your money to other people that don't deserve it, that don't work for it. They're working through the deep bank, central banking system. Some people tell me, I don't even think money's real anymore. It's all on a computer now. They will take our religion away. Quote, verse 31, I will make your sanctuaries desolate. God will visit us with cannibalism. You shall eat the flesh of your sons and daughters. Verse 29, yeah, that's from the holy and inerrant word of God. It's gross, Father. You shall eat the flesh of your sons and daughters. Think about Planned Parenthood, abortion, the jab. <gasps> yeah. God's inflicting us so we can wake up and adore his face. Here's the good news. The good news is this. The remedy 
is found in the curse. So as we're living the curse, it can make us the best Catholics ever, the best Christians. Jesus revealed in October of 1846, three months before the Communist Manifesto in 1847, to Sister Marie de Saint Pierre, a holy and humble Carmelite in Tours, France, quote, the instruments which our Lord would use with which to punish the world would not be the elements, but the malice of revolutionary men. The malice of revolutionary men. So what's happening in the darkness of these globalists and their agents and the demons, God's giving them the power over us so that we can wake up and fight to be with God in heaven. So what do we do in these times? God has given us the holy face of Jesus as an arch confraternity. What is a confraternity? A confraternity shares in the spiritual goods of all the members. It's a spiritual army. There was a man who served Mass today. He just had to leave from the Marines. The Arch of the Holy Face is like the highest ranks in the Marine Corps in the spiritual world in the Catholic Church. St. Therese of Lisieux, of the child Jesus and of the Holy Face is one of the members. There are spiritual good, goods that come from being part of a confraternity. And there's promises. There's nine promises. I'll go over some of them. And one of them, just as a prelude, our Lord said, anyone who's devoted to my holy face, their faces will shine in heaven brighter than others. Wow, I want that for eternity. I want my face to be like our Lord's. Jesus revealed to us how to get out of communism by the revelations to Sister Marie de Saint Pierre in the 1840s. I will tell you what to know and how to join this beautiful movement of God. This is what it says in the Old Testament. Five of yours shall pursue a hundred others, and a hundred of you, 10,000, your enemy shall fall before you by the sword. So what does that mean? That means it only takes a few good men and women to join, to make a counter-revolution. And as there's just a smaller group of men and women, they will take down, five of them will take down 100. But if there's 100 good men and women, they'll take down 10,000. And if there's a million good Catholic women and men, they'll take down 7 billion of the elites. And not take them down, but convert them to the face of our Lord and to the Catholic Church. In conclusion, I see so much joy in the faces and voices of members of the Arch Confraternity and Confraternities of the Holy Face because we burn with indignation to avenge the insult of blasphemy inflicted on our sovereign majesty, Jesus Christ. He promises that members of the Arch Confraternity of the Holy Face, established by His Holiness, Pope Leo XIII, that their faces shall shine with a brightness surpassing that of many others in eternal life. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen.